This is my face. And this is an AI generated image of my face. And now this is that same AI generated image speaking and following my face motions. And now this is me as a dog. Woof, woof. Today, we're gonna learn how to do this with a brand new tool called Live Portrait. Live Portrait has come from the same people that have created the so-called Sora Killer app, Clink. So they're no stranger to creating impressive AI video generation tools. So the way Live Portrait works is that it takes an image as an input and a video where the face is moving, speaking or something called the driving video. And what it does is it maps out key points in the face of the driving videos, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, etc and then uses what I'm guessing is diffusion-based image generation to create the movement in the source image to match what is coming from the driving video. And in fact, Live Portrait is not the first to have actually done this. They actually compare themselves to other tools that have come out previously. And we can see here from the example provided that there seems to be one of the better, if not the best one out there. If we look closely at some of the comparisons and we look at the source image in the example provided here with the driving video, while definitely performing significantly better than any portrait, if you look closely at the various other examples, there is a slightly improved adherence to smaller facial movements and a little less artifacting overall. In this particular example here, we can see if we look at it again, the live portrait version performs slightly better than Dagon. We can see a little bit of strangeness happening here in the eye. And even here with FADM, there's just slight movements of the face and other slight details that just seem to be slightly better in this version. It might not seem like a lot, but it's these small details that help us get to something that could be potentially believable without triggering that sense of something doesn't look or feel quite right. Admittedly, it is difficult to make those comparisons with such small images here, but we'll have to do our own detailed comparison at some point and see whether it really is the better model. In my experimentation, however, Live Portrait has been relatively easy to use and incredibly fun at mapping out facial expressions to all sorts of characters and people. And we can see here that it not only works with the same image of the person and a video with that same face, but you can actually take a different image and a different driving video and actually have the two work together. Now, what is particularly impressive with Live Portrait, they have now taken this technology and actually applied it with video to video. So if we look at these examples over here, we again have a driving video, a source video of a character without a face moving, and the facial movements in the driving video are applied to the source video to create a new video with those face movements. I can definitely see a lot of applications in this, particularly with talking head videos where maybe you messed up something, you forgot to say something and you just re-record yourself later and just superimpose it in whatever it is that you're wearing in that particular scene. Or, you know, as many people have done, make dance videos funnier. And you can even take these mappings and apply them to animal faces. Before I continue, this video is sponsored by PromptCrafters.co. PromptCrafters.co is a phenomenal mid-journey prompts database. If you find yourself stuck on ideas or struggling to improve your prompts, check out promcrafters.co. It has a phenomenal database of prompts that you can use as a starting point to help you figure out what's needed for your prompt. Nail that exact style or use the templates with your own ideas to get to the image that you need. I actually use Prompt Crafters to generate the talking head image that you see before you. I was able to head into the database, look for an image style that I kind of liked, made a few modifications to the prompt, and within five minutes, I had this image. If you're interested, links are in the description below. And now, back to the video. So to install Live Portrait, it's incredibly simple. You start by going to the Live Portrait GitHub, and we're gonna go ahead and grab the GitHub URL. Head on over to the folder where you wanna install Live Portrait, right click and open in terminal. And once you're in your terminal, just type in git clone, and then you're just gonna wanna paste that git URL that we grabbed earlier. Go ahead and press enter and it'll just download it and put it in its own folder. Now, once that's done, you're gonna need to download the models and put them in their respective folders. If we head back to the Live Portrait GitHub and scroll down a little bit, you'll see here that the locations for the weights are all set up. Now, they do say here that the easiest way to download the pre-trained weights is from Hugging Face, but you may need to have certain 
things pre-installed, so we're just gonna do it manually. The easiest for me is just going ahead and grabbing it from Google Drive. So if we click on this link, it'll open up a Google Drive for you where you can download each of the folders. It will download a zip file, which we can then unzip and put in the correct location. So we can see here in my downloads folder, we've got the live portrait and insight phase folders. So we're gonna go ahead and open them up. And here in the live portrait folder, we'll just go to pre-trained weights and just grab the top level folder. In this case, it's insight face. And for live portrait, it will be the live portrait folder. Check to make sure that everything inside those folders is there and you're good to go. Once you've got the models installed and you've opened up the terminal inside the correct folder, make sure that you're in. You can see here I'm in desktop live portraits. Go ahead and copy these commands from the GitHub. These will also be in the description down below and go ahead and paste them into your terminal. What this will do is it will create a virtual environment for live portrait with a specific version of Python, install the dependencies so that it doesn't interfere with whatever you've got on your system. And then we should be able to run it. One more thing to note is you do need to make sure that you have FFmpeg installed in your system. To do that, just click on the link over here, head over to FFmpeg, download and install it. It's pretty straightforward. If you're not sure if you have FFmpeg installed, go ahead and open up a new terminal and type in ffmpeg with the flag version. If you get a wall of text kind of like this, this means you've got ffmpeg installed. If you don't, that means you need to go ahead and install it. Okay, so we actually had a couple of errors happen when I ran this. If we look here, there are some dependency issues that have come up and this is why having those environments are really important. If we scroll up, we can actually see that there's an error called environment name not found. Conda could not find the environment live portrait, meaning that whether or not the environment was created, the terminal did not go into that environment. And then when it tried to install the requirements, it ran into conflicts because it's trying to install these dependencies at the system level and not within the environment. So it's really important that we fix that. So we're going to go ahead and try this again step by step. So when something like this happens, the best thing to do is to look at the commands because a lot of the times you'll get them in these lumps and just drop them in one by one to see where the problem is. So let's go ahead and try again to create that environment. It's asking me if I want to proceed with these packages. I'm going to say yes. And now it seems like the environment was set up properly. We can see here that it's telling me to do conda activate live portrait to get into this environment we can see that matches up with the command that's here in the GitHub. So let's go ahead and activate it. We're in and let's try once again to pip install those requirements. And now because we're in an isolated environment specific to live portrait, that should work. It's also important to remember that if you do want to run live portrait in this way in the future, make sure that you activate that environment. So we've got it here, conda activate live portrait. If you're like me and you have a tendency to forget that you need to activate an environment, what was the environment name and so on. I like to go into the folder and just create a new text file. And I call this my readme and just go ahead and drop that command. Conda activate live portrait. And that way I remember, oh, hey, there's something I've got to do to get this to run properly. We can see here that pip install requirements seems to be working fine. All the wheels have been done, successfully built. So it should be ending any second now. And there we have it. Successfully installed with no issues whatsoever. That's how important those environments are. Once we're in, we're going to go ahead and simply type in Python app.py. In my case, I'm also adding in the share flag because I want to access the user interface on a different computer on my network. And we can see here by using the share command, it's given me a public URL, which I can access I believe on any computer on my network and possibly remotely if you have port forwarding set up and whatnot. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And here we are. We've got live portrait up and running. Now I've gone ahead and loaded up some of the examples over here on the left. We drop in the image that we want to animate. And over here is the driving video, the video that's got the facial expressions, the movement, the talking and so on. And then live portrait will combine the two. If we just have a quick look at the video, it's basically that song. And once we animate it, we can see down here the final result. 
So we can see the movement of the character down there following the expressions of the face over here. Pretty cool. Now, initially this is all you can do. There is an option down here to retarget and I think these are the parameters that were brought up earlier where there is this target eyes open ratio and target lip open ratio. And basically what I believe this allows us to do is adjust the intensity of the opening and closing of the eyes and lips. So if we look here, right, we put them both at the max level and retarget. And we can see here that it gives us an example of the maximum application of the movement of the eyes and the lips. If we bring the eyes down, let's bring it down to about 30% and we retarget that, we can see that the eyes are significantly less open, uh, almost half closed. And if we do the same thing for the lips, let's go ahead and retarget that. You see the mouth is now a lot more closed and we should be able to apply those changes back to the video and the overall aggressiveness will be significantly downplayed. And let's have a look at the revision. I'll be honest, I didn't notice a huge difference in the new retargeting settings that we put. I'm not sure if that's because they're not actually being applied and this is just an example of what the parameters do if they're applied with a different GUI or if it just wasn't intense enough. At the end of this video, I'll post a few experiments so you can see different variations and so on. But yeah, that's uh, basically Live Portrait. What did you guys think? Did you find this helpful? As usual, please leave your questions and comments down below, or even better, come by our Discord and check it out. Share with us your hilariously crazy creations. And if this video was especially helpful to you, please consider supporting me on Patreon, as your support there really helps out the channel. And finally, don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon if you're especially interested in seeing how we get this set up in Comfy UI, as well as doing the video to video examples that I showed earlier on in the video. That video should be coming up in the next couple of days, so stay tuned. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.